Today we're going to talk about contour maps. Contour maps are very similar to the isobars that we talked about in our weather unit. In our weather unit, a isobar was a line that had the same air pressure along it. So everything on this isobar has 1016 uh, millimeters of mercury. All right, contour maps are a little bit different than the isobars that we looked at before. In isobars, we're looking at air pressure. In a contour map, we're looking at elevation. So everything on this line is at the same elevation. Everything at this line is at 400 meters. When we looked at our isobars, we knew that when the lines were close together, it was windy. Now that we look at a contour map, we know that wherever it's close together, instead of being windy, we know that it is rather steep. And whenever it's not very close together, it is rather flat. Okay, but let's take a look and see if we can prove that. Okay, let's take a look at this contour map right here. Contour maps tell you about elevation. So one of the questions I like to ask my students, let's assume that this is the ocean, is I ask them what is the elevation along this contour line right here? All right, and that's actually a really easy question. If you see that one, it should be a no-brainer, right? Because we measure elevation based off of sea level. Well, if this is the ocean, this is the sea level. So this would be elevation zero. And so how much is each one of these lines worth, all right? And usually what you're going to find is on the bottom of a map, you have something called a contour interval. And that tells you what is the distance, the difference in elevation for every one of these. So this is 10 meters. That makes... 0 meters, 10, 20 meters, 30 meters, 40 meters, 50 meters, all the way up. Okay? So, let's kind of fill that in for us. So, we've got it going all the way up. And let's say you're going to go from point A to point B. All right? And so, if we start walking at point A, you would be at elevation 0. So, you're starting down here, you're at elevation 0. And as you walk along for a while, eventually you get, and you're at elevation 10. All right? So you can see that you've kind of walked that distance right there. All right? And then, let's just drop down some of the rest of these. Here, you're at elevation 20, 30, 40, and 50. So if we were to complete these and see maybe what it would look like if you did that walk, you would see that it looks like this. And so the further these contour lines are apart, compare it to right here when these lines are close together. And you'll notice that what we have here is it's fairly flat here when the lines are further apart. But the closer together they are, the steeper it gets. So with contour lines, close equals steep. That's very important. So let's take a look at a real world example. Here is a contour map for Crater Lake. All right? And where do you notice around the outside of Crater Lake? You see that those contour lines are really, really, really close together, right? They are um, just almost on top of each other. All right? So let's see if we can even take a zoom in here. Ah, it doesn't work that way. All right, well, here's a map or a picture of what Crater Lake really looks like. So you can see in the center here you have Wizard Island, and you can see that it's fairly steep. And all around the outside edge you have these cliffs right around here. And over here you can see that they're extremely steep because those lines are close together. All right, let's take a look at this map. Again, we have the ocean, so we know what is the elevation here at the ocean zero meters. Here it says that our contour interval is 20 meters. So that would make this 20, 40, 60, 80, and now they labeled it for 100. Usually they'll label major numbers. They won't label every one just because there's not enough room. So one of the other questions that you may get asked on a contour map question is, what direction is this river flowing? And this is something that every kid knows when they sat in a high chair and they poured their milk. Water and milk all go downhill. So we know this is zero, this is 100, 
we know that this river is going this direction. Right? One of the other things that you can tell with a river that uh, might help you out is you notice how all of these tend to have this V shape. Right? The V always points towards the source of the river. The V points towards the source of the river. Okay? What else do we see going on here? If you were to walk, where would the steepest part of this be? Right here quite steep. How do we know? The lines are close together. What about an area like this? All right, an area, there's no lines there, so we know that that is relatively flat. Okay, let's see how well you pick this up. First question is, what is the contour interval in this map? So pause the video if you need to and fill in what is the contour interval. Looking at the map, see if you can work backwards to figure out how many meters each one of these lines is worth. Your second question, what is the elevation at point A right here? And then your third question, which line is steeper, yellow? or green. If you were to hike along those lines, which one is steeper? And be sure that you explain how you know that.